Instantly an angel of the Lord struck Herod with sickness because he accepted the people's worship instead of giving the glory to God. So he was consumed by worm and died. Folks, we can get into a dangerous place in life of receiving the praise of others. Okay? And if we don't acknowledge God in His presence in our life, what is our destiny? Death. Eternal separation from God. Why, did, why is this little section of Scripture stuck in between them coming, uh, going to Jerusalem with relief and then the commissioning of Paul and Barnabas. Why is this stuck in here? Why did, why did this little piece of scripture have to be in the middle of that? Because this is where we left off in 12, and, and uh, Kevin picked up in 13. And these are a few short verses between uh, the response of the people in Antioch to send support to the famine, to relieve the famine in Jerusalem, and then Paul and Barnabas being commissioned to go uh, go out. Why do you suppose this is stuck in there? There's a reason. Didn't work, right? You put their trust and faith in the wrong person. So what if? What did God illustrate very clearly? Trust in Him, but even the kings needed to trust in Him, right? There was no one greater than He was, but when we take that greatness on ourselves and refuse to acknowledge God, where do we end up? Separated from God. <laughs> Separated from God, right? Anybody's stomach churn inside of them and eat them up? <laughs> Where's that come from? Anxiety, worry, right? Stress. Why does that happen? Because we forget, we forget who we serve. And we forget to put our trust and faith in the Lord. Trust me. It will get eaten up. <laughs> we'll get eaten up. It the then 24 says, Meanwhile, the word of God continued to spread, and there were many new believers. Okay, in spite of this, the word continued to spread. Meanwhile, that's the second time in the last two verses, uh, two chapters, we've heard that word. Meanwhile, God was still working on other fronts. We get caught up in thinking that God is only doing one thing in one place at one time. He's not. You've heard the story, right? Donia's story. How many boxes went out that year? I'm guessing it was a few years ago, probably in the neighborhood of five million. Did each person receive the box that God intended them to receive? Yes, they did. How do we know that? Because she got a radio. Okay? That's how we know that. All right? Um, it's funny. The, um, just the other day, some girls that Linda worked with at Baltimore came down to, to Charlotte. And those four girls packed 1,200 boxes in one day. Okay, they have the first task. It's not the only task, but the first task they have is to pack over 300,000 boxes that are going into dark country. Then they have some other, other things that they have to do. But, but think about each one of those boxes, you know, and think about meanwhile. Meanwhile, meanwhile we sit here, God's working out there. All over the place, God's working. When Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission to Jerusalem, they returned, just like the TV screen returned, <laughs> taking John Mark with them. So when they had finished in Jerusalem, 
They went back to Antioch and they brought this John Mark fellow with them. Now, John Mark's an interesting character. Kind of a baby. Got a little homesick. Wanted his mama. But we'll read about that later. Paul had no use for him. But Barnabas said, I'll, I'll take him and, and encourage him. Ended up writing the first gospel. So, you know, don't, don't doubt your weaknesses. <laughs> don't doubt your insecurities. Don't, Because meanwhile, God's still on a job, right? God is always at work. God is always at work. And he invites us to join him. Folks, we can't be everywhere. We can't be in five million different places. But we can be here. We can be present in the life of the people that God moves us to touch. The question is, will we? So we've, we've decommissioned Herod Agrippa this morning. God said, uh, okay, your usefulness is done. That's it. Who have we commissioned? What does it mean to commission something? Okay, put it in service, all right. First off, you have to have the authority to do the commission. To commission anything, you have to have the authority. You have to have the power and authority, right? And then you can give orders, right? And the and you're commissioning something to accomplish a task, a charge, or direction to grant the authority for a particular action or function, right? So we're being told that we can do something for someone, right? Or you have a job to do, right? You're given authority, okay? When Jesus healed, or actually the first time he forgave sin, what, what did the Pharisee ask him? By what authority do you forgive? Only God alone can forgive. Well, that should have been in his answer, shouldn't it have? Right? Well, wait a minute. If he's forgiven sins, this guy must be God. Right? And Jesus said, so that you know that I have the authority to forgive sins, get up and walk. <laughs> well, what's easier? Saying the words? Or reaching out your hand to a crippled man? And what did the crippled man do? He believed and reached back. And he touched Jesus' hand. Jesus helped him up. Did he have the authority to forgive sin? Think about the authority that's been given to us. I've been to a commissioning. Back in 1991, I was at the commissioning of the USS Kentucky in Groton, Connecticut. It's an Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine. 24 Titan missiles each one with a nuclear warhead 20 times the size that we dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Okay? Now, I'm pretty sure at the commissioning they weren't in there. But nobody knows where they are. It's like a chess game. They go into a secretive place, and everybody's in lockdown on the sub, and they hear the doors open, and they may be putting missiles in or taking missiles out. It's powered by a nuclear reactor. Plus it has, I think, 40 or 48 torpedoes. Okay, which is just the old, you know, blow stuff up kind of variety, nothing nuclear or anything. But think about that. What do you think they commission something like that to do? Nope. Keep the peace most powerful thing out there. Ain't nobody going to shoot at that. Why? When push comes to shove, people value their life. Okay? And, and if that ever got hit, fully armored, we're all dead. Because the, the, 
the explosion would crack the earth. That, as my friend would say, is the safest place on earth because there's nobody going to touch us. And when it's strategically located, it's the safest place on earth. The best place to live is pretty close to Grot and Subbase. You know why? Because at any given moment, there could be enough armament to crack the earth parked down there in the shipyard. And believe me, our enemies aren't ready to blow that up yet. And, and so just, you know, sometimes um, we're commissioned for a task. And we're given great power and authority. What, what did, we, we call it the Great Commission in Matthew 28. Yep. And it, Jesus said, all power and authority have been given to me. Go. And I will be with you always. What kind of power and authority do we have when we go in Jesus' name? We've got all power and authority, don't we? We've got all power and authority. To do what? Give people peace. What greater peace is there than knowing that your final destination is secure? That no matter what happens here on this earth, when it ends, you will be with God in heaven for eternity. All authority. We are commissioned and given authority. Authority to do what? To represent God and to follow His leading. Okay. We get confused there. Because somehow we think we get commissioned to think about what we should be doing in God's name and trying to convince God to follow us. The, we don't have the authority to tell God what to do. He gave us the authority and commissioned us to represent Him and to follow Him. What happens when we go our own way? No, not the Fleetwood Mac. Well, you know, there was a guy that called that his theme song, and his name was Bill Clinton, but that's another subject, and we won't go there. What happens when we go our own way? Eventually along that road, you will stop, fall to your knees, and cry out to God and say, Save me. <laughs> okay? And it may be 10 feet down the road. It may be when you're at wit's end. Okay? God doesn't give us the authority and commission us to go do what we think we should do in His name. Got to get that straight. Because with the authority comes great responsibility. I don't know if you quite grasp this, but what happens when you know the answer and you're asked to tell others the answer and you don't do it? Who's responsible? We are. We have a responsibility. We know the way. We know the truth. We know the life. Guess what? We have been commissioned and given the authority to tell others about it. We have a responsibility. Sometimes that can be overwhelming, can't it? But that authority comes great responsibility. Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch and of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, called the black man, Lucius, called Cyrene, Manson, or Manus, Manon, I, that's why I had Kevin read the scripture, because, you know, there was Peter, Paul, John, George, Ringo, um, childhood companion of King Herod, Atypus, we're going to talk about that guy, and Saul. All right, so we've, we've got these guys, right? Who's the most important guy there? No, oh, he's just the most responsible. The guy whose name I couldn't remember. 
Manny. All right, we'll go, we'll go with that. Well, who was he? A who? A, com a childhood companion of the king? Wait a minute. How did he end up here and, and the king's eaten by worms? Hmm. Guess he must have made a decision, huh? Guess he must have made it. Somebody must have told him something, right? He might have even believed him. He might have even believed him. How many times do we fail to tell somebody something because we don't think they'll listen? And how many times do we rationalize not sharing the gospel? because we think they're not worth it, or it's not worth the effort. I'm kind of comfortable here in my chair. Oh, warm? No, it's cold outside. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to, you know. And, and you know, it's okay. I'll do it some other time. I'll do it some other time. It's not convenient, right? Folks, we have to understand that we have been given the responsibility to meet people face to face, to have a presence in their life, not to send it in. And you know people that send it in? You know what that means? It means I'll stay here and I'll send a note. Or I'll stay here and I won't do it. And, and I'm not being critical. What I'm trying to do is emphasize that that's the activity we ought to be about. If you have a choice between calling and going, what's the choice? Go. Right? And, and you know what? You have been a tremendous encouragement to me. Because this isn't a body that sends it in. This is a, a, a body of believers that goes. Okay, it, it, you know, you, and you don't understand how much that makes my responsibility easier. You know, we, how many people do we have right now that can't come here today? Anybody know? I know, I know everybody knows. Why? Because we talk to each other in this church. And we share with each other in this church. Millie, uh, Millie looks like she's been in a street fight, okay? Now, she don't want to come because she doesn't want people to see her the way she is. But people have gone to see Millie, right? Right? How many people can confirm? Millie's got two black eyes, a broken nose, and nine stitches, okay? Millie's been in a street fight, okay? And the street won, <laughs> literally. She tripped and fell, and her face hit the ground, and the ground won. Gravity always wins, you know? You, you, if you doubt gravity wins, look in the mirror. You know gravity wins. That's all there is to it. It doesn't matter. Gravity wins, no matter what. Millie got back up, and she's, she's making progress. Who else, is, who else would want to be here today that isn't here? Art and Claudia, right? Gene, how's Gene doing? Let's see. How many people in this have visited Gene? Look at, look at that. We're only a dozen people. And I'm not trying to make the other people feel bad, but know that we cover each other's back because we can't all do everything. And, and we have people that are visiting each other, right? That it is a priority to have a presence in people's lives. And that's, so, so I'm not, this isn't about, you're not doing it. This is about keep doing it. This is about, you know, we're doing good. We're doing good. I, I used to be able to reach further down my back. But, but keep it up because that is the essence of following Christ. He said we have to go through Samaria. Really? We don't go that way. We go around. 
There's bad people that live there. There's people we don't like that live there. What are you doing at the well at noontime? Why don't you come here when everybody else comes here in the early morning? And Jesus said, because I had an appointment. Because I came here to see you. You ever surprise somebody that way? Start trying to. Let God make your appointment and go. What are you doing here? Hanging out. I'm just here to see you. No agenda, just coming on by, checking on, seeing if things are okay. That's a that's what we are about. That's the essence of this this ministry, this 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 message that Jesus sent, and he modeled it for us. Every time the disciples tried to keep somebody from coming to Jesus, what did Jesus say? Let them come. Whether they were children, whether they were lepers, it didn't matter who they were, did it? Let them come. <laughs> One day, all these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit said, a point. Now, which one of these guys was the Holy Spirit? How do you suppose this happened? The Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Saul for a special work to which I have called them. Every one of those guys heard the same thing. Have you ever done that and, and talked to somebody and they, they said the same thing or somebody... Uh, you know, came together and you were on the same page, but you didn't have conversation about it and you didn't talk to anybody? Did that ever happen? Guess who that is? It's him. It's him. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. First rule of having responsibility and authority do what the Holy Spirit says, okay? Do what the Holy Spirit says. It's not for question. It's not for discussion. You know, it says, oh, we're going to have to put a committee together. We're going to have to have a meeting to see. Do you think we should take uh, Barnabas and Saul and set them apart for them? No. Immediately they said, well, let's lift them up in prayer, lay our hands on them, and commission them and send them to do the work the Lord asked them to do. Bar so Barnabas and Saul were sent out by who? By the five guys that were in a room praying, right? No, who sent them out? The Holy Spirit. They went down to the seaport of Seleucia, and then they sailed to the island of Cyprus there in the town of Sal Salamis. They went to the Jewish synagogues and preached the word of God. John Mark went with them as their assistant. Some of us are more visual than others. I'd use my pointer, because I got a neat little pointer, see? See? We had a cat. Had to be going nuts. But when I pointed at the TV, it doesn't work. So follow me. We're, so we start up there in Antioch. Jerusalem's down here. They went to Seleucia. Then they sailed to Salamis. And then we're going to find out that they, they walked all the way across that island to Paphos. And then later in his journey, as we follow him along, they went to Perga and then uh, to uh, Pisidian Antioch, then Iconium, then Lystra, or Lystra, depends, uh, you know, tomato, tomato, then to Derby. Okay, that's the first missionary journey of who? Saul, Paul, Barnabas, John, Mark. So that's what we're going to be doing for the next couple of weeks. We're going to be following them along and see what they come in, up against on the road. Why is it that we can't stay here? Why is it that we can't just Really? Oh, man. Well, my, what am I doing? I got to go. I got to go. I think I'll leave this week and I'm going to go. I'm going to go find some unsaved people. 
administer to them. Is that okay? I'm going to drive, though. I won't take a boat to Cyprus. I'm probably going to drive a car. Hopefully, I'm going to drive the pace car. We'll see. <sighs> Don't go there. Every time we go, it's what? 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 What is it when we go? It's an adventure, yeah, yeah, but that's not the answer. It's obedience, yeah, you're fulfilling your commission, okay. It's a missionary journey, even if you go to the store. Okay, if you get up and take a ride down to Walgreens, guess what? When you walk out of Walgreens, that sales clerk that you talked to ought to be in a better place than when you walked into Walgreens. Okay? Why? Because we've been given authority and we're commissioned to do what? Reflect the character of God. Does God ever leave anything worse than when he came? No. He doesn't. Think about that. Think about that. If we go along, every day is a missionary journey. I know, the ride home. You're all contemplating the ride home and somebody's going to cut you off. And the pastor said, you got to smile and wave with all your fingers and say, have a nice day. Right? Right? That's right. That's exactly right. Cut them some slack. Maybe exercise a little grace. Every step we take. In here, we can be ourselves. Because we all understand we're not. We're here because we're not all there. And we can let our guard down and we can confess to one another and we can support one another and pray for one another. Outside that door, man, you got to be, you may be the only Jesus somebody sees. You got to be ready. You got to understand that. How was the commission determined and confirmed? Okay, the Holy Spirit spoke, right? They all shared with each other, this is what God's telling us to do. Okay, let's double check and pray some more. Yep, that's what God's telling us to do. Let's do it. Okay, how did those commissioned respond? They, they accepted it and went, right? They went. It wasn't a, oh, no, wait a minute. I got to take care. I got to do this and I got to do that. And I, no, I can't go yet. How... What do you think the others did in their absence? Prayed? Okay. Yeah. They were doing their own adventure. They they all they remember what happened before. Remember that word. What's that big word starts with an M? Meanwhile, so do you think the activity in the church at Antioch ceased because Paul and Barnabas took off? Do you think those left behind said, Oh, we're good? We did our job. We prayed for them. We commissioned them. We sent them off. Let's just sit here and wait and hear what they say. No. Yeah, we hired them. We commissioned them. And we're good. And we can just sit here fat, dumb, and happy and eat donuts and drink coffee, right? That's all right. That's a good place to be, right? As long as you're inviting somebody to come have coffee and donuts with you, it's okay. It's better if it's that's what God's leading you to do. No, the work didn't stop in Antioch. And it, and it, and it, and it shouldn't stop. If I'm not here, should it stop? No. Should it? No. Keep going. Keep going. It's a great message to preach before I leave for two weeks, isn't it? They traveled through the whole island until they came to pay the, the P word there. Oh, yeah. Paphos. I always get the PH. You know, I want to say Paphos. <laughs> I know it's not right, so I stop, and then my brain just, you know, my brain isn't connected sometimes. So, so phonics isn't hooked on phonics. That's not me. <laughs> I'm just not hooked on phonics. They, then they met a Jewish sorcerer and a false prophet by the name of Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. What was the first thing they met? 
Okay, now what's the first thing they met? I can read that. It says it right there. Sorry, Kevin, I'm just picking on you. Who'd they meet? What'd they meet? Opposition is the, rant, the answer I'm looking for. I'll tell you. We ain't got all day here. Opposition. They met opposition. Guess what we can expect? We answer. How many people have prayed for patience? Be honest. You prayed for patience, right? Right. What does God do? Put you in situations that you need to exercise patience. No, God, I don't want to learn patience. I want patience. Right? If God commissions you and sends you somewhere, and it may just be Walgreens, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get things that cross your path that are going to, what? Come up against you. There's going to be opposition. There's going to be that fool that pulls out in front of you, and you say, hurry up, I'm on my way to Walgreens, because I want to make that lady's day much better than it is right now. Right? Get out of my way. I'm going to do great things for God. Right? Sometimes we get so focused on the mission that we forget that along the way there's going to be opportunities to change people's lives. The pro council an intelligent man sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the words of God. Doesn't say he wanted to follow the words of God. He didn't want to submit his life to the word. He just wanted to hear them. We know people like that, right? It says, but Elmas the sorcerer, Eli, is it Eli, Eli, or Elmas? I would, I think that. Elimus? All right. Elimus? All right, I have to draw on my, my learned counsel. The sorcerer, for that is what his name means, and I have no idea what Elimus means, and I can get it for you, but opposed them and tried to turn the pro-counsel from the faith. Have you ever run into anybody that said, don't listen to that, all they want to do is brainwash all they're trying to do is get your money. All they want, all they want is more membership. All they want, they want something. They're only being nice to you because they want something. Right? I don't know what words he used, but he tried to what? Why do you suppose he tried to stop Paul and Barnabas? Oh, he's going to lose his job. He's going to, if he puts his trust and faith in God, like Paul and Barnabas want, he doesn't need this guy anymore. He's going to lose his job. Don't listen to them. Listen to me. Oh, man. I hate when that happens. I hate when that Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit. He looked at the sorcerer in the eye. Then he said, you son of the devil. You son of the devil. Get that right. You did good, Kevin. You son of the devil. Full of every sort of deceit and fraud, an enemy of all that is good. Wow. That guy had a lot of baggage. Right? Yep. Will you never stop perverting the way, the true ways of the Lord? What does the enemy do? Pervert the true ways of the Lord. We see it. We see people that claim to be Christian that pervert the ways of the Lord. For what? For their benefit. That becomes the obstacle that we have to overcome because they're not being true to what God... Why are we investing and pouring into their lives? For our benefit or theirs? Are you going to get a scorecard when you get to heaven and it's going to say, look at all the good things you did? Or are you going to say, I'm not here for all the good things I did. I'm here because Christ died for me. Right? Now, there are good things to do. And there's things that we need to be doing. 
the things that God prompts us to do. But there are people out there doing it for the wrong reason. We do it to bring honor and glory to God, not to bring honor and glory to ourselves. Watch now, for the Lord has laid his hand of punishment upon you, and you will be struck blind, and you will not see the sunlight for some time. Instantly, mist and darkness came over the man's eyes, and he began groping and begging for someone to take his hand and lead him. You think Paul knew about this? <laughs> you think Paul been down this road before? He's watched this. I know, I know what this is going to feel like. And he said, he said, you're going to be, you're going to be struck blind. Do you think he ever regained his sight? He, the potential was there. The potential was there for this sorcerer, this son of the devil, this man, this false prophet. The potential was there. What's that potential? Accept. Yeah, accept God. Acknowledge God and receive Him, right? Do you think His eyes would have been open then? Kind of a little metaphor, folks. There's a lot of people out there that are blind. And we need to help open their eyes. And how do we open their eyes? By showing them the love of Christ. When the governor saw what had happened, he became a believer, for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. You think he was astonished about the teaching of the Lord or the fact that the Lord blinded his right-hand man? Both. The Lord not only teaches us, but he shows us. There ought to be evidence. We talked about that two weeks ago. There ought to be evidence in our life of the presence of God and what He's done. What makes our testimony effective? Evidence. Evidence. You know, it's more effective to the people you knew 20 years ago than the people that have walked alongside you after you became a Christian. You know, it, it's, hey man, I... You're not the same person that I knew. What happened? Oh, let me tell you. Let me tell you about it. The challenge for us is that, yes, we have a responsibility. Yes, we need to go. Yes, there's going to be opposition. And yet, we serve a God that's powerful and has the authority to overcome any opposition. Amen? What has God put on your hearts to do? Ask Him. Yeah, that's, that's good, Raj, but that's not specific enough. No. Nope. God will give you specific instructions. He doesn't. You ask Him and you really want to know, He'll tell you where to go. He will. Who has God called to go? Ah, there we go. Good answer, Terry. Not me, you. He called you. No, he called us all to go. He's got a place for all of us. He's got people prepared for all of us to reach. There's people that I can talk to that maybe you wouldn't be comfortable talking to, and there's people you can talk to that I don't even want to be bothered with. I know that sounds terrible, but that's not it. You, the, you've got to go where God leads you to go because that's where God prepared you to go. How This is where the rubber hits the road. How much commitment have we put into finding that out? How many days in your prayer time do you specifically ask God to put something on our heart and give us direction? That's usually not the top of our list. That's usually not the top. Think about that as we go through the next weeks. Think about intentionally asking God who and what and where and how. Hmm. Face to face. Our presence. 
God's going to lead you and show you and expect you to meet people face to face and talk about Him. Demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit. They're on the wall. Because I can tell you, God has, the world is in such a place right now that there's no denying. There's no denying that when you act like this, you're very different from everybody else out there. You're very different. Kindness and gentleness and self-control and patience and goodness and grace and peace and joy and love. There's not a lot of that out there. We have to be there. Amen? Let's stand. God calls. Will we follow?